Okay, so Mel, um, what led you to um, uh, uh, bring this session of Pilates to the community um, side of things? Well, I think the main reason is because of my connection with Tricia. So feeling, I made a comment to you earlier before we started the recording, is that I follow my heart. I only want to do at this stage of my life what I think will make a big difference. And I really select things based on how it feels. So at the bottom of everything, I believe in the power of education to make a change, to change. I saw this beautiful little, I think it's called a mnemonic or three images. One was the image of a heart. I think if you want to make change, firstly, you have to look at your own values, your own sense of identity, your own uh, purpose, your own uh, rationale for doing things. So looking within, so changing how you feel about things and what you want to bring to the world. Because unless people look within, you can't change the symbol of the house. And the house might be an organisation, it could be a community, it could be a political system, it could be a country. And so the third little image in that, um, that image is the world. Because if you can change hearts, you can change communities, organisations before you have, before you can change the world. So for me, I think knowing that central to all of that is education. I need to help people. Mm -hmm. and I think the best way of helping people is to um, help them find their why. Mm. Whether that be through working at a university, working at TAFE, working at policy level or system level, it's helping individuals collectively, therefore you help populations. So from education, I went into pioneering the work that was called health promotion in schools, mm. which was helping the community of the schools to become more health promoting. Mm. And there, I don't think this misconception is here as much as it was 30 years ago, but people used to think that health promotion was a pamphlet, a message, mm. some behavioural approach, but health promotion is actually democracy. It's about encouraging people to take control or influence the things that they can control and to then work at systems and policy levels to make the environment, the social environment, the physical environment conducive to health and wellness. So that's been my role. Um, and I followed my heart really from loved teaching, loved teaching children, moved into health promotion, moved into working at policy level with the Department of Health and country health. And I have written many resources for communities and individuals. But the other common element as part, as well as being someone who wants to make change through education, has been the love of movement. So movement heals any sort of movement as long as it's um, I think done with intention and done with authenticity any kind of movement can safely heal but for me it was the joy of jumping around to music <laughs> which is where I met Trish through the aerobics world and um, teaching other people who are passionate about exercise to become teachers so I did that for many many years 25 years I think part-time um, and it was the joy of moving, how it felt, the community connection, and it's so much more than moving. Mm. And then maybe 18 years ago, after teaching for 40 years, a physical educator from my uh, education background, so I'm still a physical educator. And then I discovered Pilates, which opened doors to new dimensions of movement and truly believe that Pilates is something that the whole world can benefit from because it's, I call it thinking movement. It, uh, it will teach us more about our bodies, be grateful for our bodies, how we use our bodies and how we can heal in many ways if we have, um, many of us have to heal either physically or emotionally and Pilates can help do that. 
And Mel, uh, what sort of um, feedback have you had or reaction have you had when you run sessions, say, even the, the community ones or the other ones that you've run in the past? What sort of response have you had? Uh, the movement ones? Yes. The movement classes? Um, well, I think. I think it makes a difference. I think people come to an insight. Everyone's on a different stage. Some people might approach a Pilates class like any other class. They might come to it for a, a workout, which is probably externally motivated. They want to get fit or they think it's something that will help um, with their everyday life. So there might be another motive to become involved in physical activity, particularly Pilates. But once you discover the different layers that there are, you will find more about understanding how your body works together as a system, um, how very subtle changes can bring you to be aware of your posture, your mood, the impact of mood and posture, your breath, how you, how you hold your posture to get more breath. So I think I've had people who love it because they can do a strong workout. I've had people who love it because it's helped them manage their back pain or their neck pain. And I've had other people who uh, love it because it helps them open their minds to more possibilities. So mm. it's different for everyone. It's a journey and I'm still a student, mm. lifelong learning. I, I haven't stopped learning at all. Mel, how have you found the, um, the I mean, with coronavirus and the, um, everyone moving more to the online platform, the Zoom, how have you found that with like the teaching of Pilates and, and the engagement? Like what's the impact? And because um, we've, we've heard lots of great things about people still receiving something really valuable through that. So I'd like to hear, you know, your... your um... Yeah, well, I was driven to do something about it because like many, when we locked down, it was a great time to reflect and obviously family, friends, um, pets. But the other thing that I found that I was desperately missing was the connection with others and it was my teaching. So I offered that online and I found there were people that I'd connected with who were also missing that social connection. So for me, it was a savior and it still is, even though community groups have come back together and I'm still teaching some face-to-face, -face. there is a really strong place to link in through this amazing technology. So I've got, um, now I call them friends and family from interstate uh, joining me so we can connect in this virtual platform. I, I think it's an amazing opportunity to reach out, connect and support people. So it's only been positive for me, apart from the technological learning journey, <laughs> yes. which is another another thing I've mastered. I'm very proud of the fact that I've mastered uh, the use of the internet to teach. And even got a new mic uh, to go with it. New mic yeah, and Yeti. <laughs> Yeti yeah. was the investment. It makes a big difference. Yeah, no, it sounds wonderful. And... Um, and we're very grateful that you're um, on the calendar and the, the, bringing the event because, you know, we've got other physical um, activities as well. But Pilates is one of those that is for, for everyone, really, because popping in, even if you haven't done anything like that before, it, I mean, you've got different layered classes with um, intensities. Is that right? So what's the one yes. for the... For the actual calendar on the Tuesday that you offer, what's that one about and who's it best for? Well, that's an introduction. I call it gentle and restorative. Yes. So it's for someone who would like to try Pilates, might not have experienced a class before. So it's low risk. Um, it's embracing for anyone. I do suggest, though, that if people have any particular musculoskeletal concerns that as with any movement you know more movement is safer than no movement at all it's more important to keep moving however if there's any concern that they check with their doctor but it's safe for just about everybody mm -hmm. so the class is focused on the principles pilates is underpinned by a series of principles and the principles 
probably sound a little bit overwhelming when you first start, but then when you apply them to the movement, they make absolute sense. So the principles, for example, the principle of the breath, which is common to many mind-body classes, the breath facilitates the movement and the movement facilitates the way you breathe. So we spend some time introducing the principles, how to breathe efficiently. Most people don't breathe efficiently enough. So it's teaching us to use that breath pattern and then applying it to movement to help you move more comfortably. Another, uh, there's several principles, I'll just pick out a couple. Another principle we talk about um, elongation. So working in the optimal position with your posture for your joints, your ligaments, the muscles, the tendons, and working from the central core, which is your fa fabulous spine, so we teach people how to um, get that sense of elongation, ease, grace, and postural balance. So there are about eight principles and I plan each class around a principle and reinforce it. And then offer, a, it's supposed to be a 20 second tutorial, <laughs> not a 20 minute tutorial, but there's a teaching moment um, at the beginning of every class where I might focus on the importance of the ribs or the importance of your thoracic spine to mobility. So I'll have a little mini teaching moment in every class. There's your teaching coming in. Yes, <laughs> so that you are aware when you sit, when you stand, when you move, when you're working, things that you, Pilates can be a tool for things that you want to do in life if you play sport if you dance if you do other types of classes if you go bushwalking but it's also a movement discipline in itself and at the end of the class i always do some mindfulness whether it be a meditation a relaxation and some introspection so we finish in a restorative way well, that's no. the Day class. <laughs> We're very grateful that you, you, uh, one of your classes is, is part of the community events, and and that uh, that's uh, your heart in all this is is very obvious, as well as your passion uh, for education. So we thank you very much. My pleasure. It's been fantastic to be involved, because I think such a wonderful initiative will support the most vulnerable in our community who can't access really um, services or programs for multiple reasons. And I think the, the, that's the target group. If we are to improve the curve, we're talking about the positivity curve of wellness, then we need to shift the curve and work with those that are most at need. Mm -hmm.